Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Dharna Noor in Baltimore, and welcome to another edition of The Ford Report. The nation is still reeling from even more police shootings. Another shooting in Illinois this morning has left a man in critical condition. Still on the minds of many are the events of this past Wednesday, when police shot and killed Philando Castile at a routine traffic stop. Castile reportedly announced that he had a gun, which he was carrying legally. The officer reportedly shot him while he was reaching for his ID. He was in the car with his four-year-old daughter and his girlfriend, who live-streamed the aftermath on Facebook. Lawyer Thomas Kelly says of the Minnesota cop who shot Philando Castile, quote, he was reacting to the presence of a gun, and also said, quote, the shooting had nothing to do with race and everything to do with the presence of that gun. Joining us to speak about this today is Glenn Ford. Glenn is the co-founder and executive editor of the Black Agenda Report and the author of A Big Lie, an analysis of the U.S. media coverage of the Granada invasion. Thanks for joining us again, Glenn. No, thank you for having me. So could I just start by getting your response to this quote, uh, nothing to do with race, uh, everything to do with the presence of a gun? Actually, it has everything to do with the actual police mission in the United States. And, and that's the real subject. That's what people are protesting against, the lawlessness of the police, uh, which sometimes greatly resembles lynch law. Lynch law and police law are linked because, well, they're not often uh, rooted in the rule of law at all. The police mission is to contain, control, uh, terrorize, and most importantly, to criminalize black people in the United States. And if that is your mission, then the logic is that black bodies are going to uh, pile up all over uh, the place. Uh, when the system uh, treats black people as criminals, as a group, uh, then there is no presumption of innocence. Uh, there is no due process of law. There is no law at all. And the uh, defendant cop's uh, lawyer uh, is making an actually an extra legal case. Uh, he's saying uh, that a black man plus a gun somehow is a green light for any action that the cop uh, is willing to take. Uh, and, and really, that is the formula that cops uh, uh, act under, even though it is totally illegal. Black man plus gun, or black man and the rumor of a gun, or black man and the possibility to uh, plant a gun equals uh, death. Uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Ster Sterling uh, he was not permitted to have a gun because of a felony conviction, uh, but the gun that was apparently uh, in his pocket was never brandished by uh, him. We saw, witnesses saw, uh, the cops extricating it from uh, his pocket after uh, he had been shot. Uh, they had shot him after they totally immobilized him. Uh, they apparently acted uh, in the belief, in the certainty, uh, that they were covered if they kill a black man who has a gun present uh, on him. So that seems to be a law from Minnesota down to Louisiana and I'm sure over to California. There's a national uh, policy of mass black incarceration that calls forth these uh, police uh, crimes. Uh, now, President Obama and even the Congressional Black Caucus want to divert uh, people's attention away from the actual uh, policing mission and policies in the United States by saying this is a gun control issue. But it's not. It's a black people control issue. That's the way the cops uh, see it. And, and in fact, that's the way the NRA sees it. Uh, the NRA issued a statement uh, mourning the death of those uh, cops in Dallas, but it didn't say a word about uh, Philando uh, uh, Castile. They actually, was, they actually noted the importance of not speaking about the murder of Philando Castile, I believe. Uh, they said that they wanted to wait until they had more information about the killing in order to say anything. But uh, you're saying they did issue an, uh, a statement about the police officers who were shot in Dallas, correct? That's right. If they see some ambiguity uh, in in Minnesota in that case, then they're really not about uh, gun control or or gun control laws. Uh, I, I think the NRA, which is a front, a political front uh, for the weapons producing industry, uh, understands that the bulk of their customers are <clears throat> white people, <clears throat> and white people per household uh, own more guns than black people. 
and many of these white people stock up on these guns uh, because they think they are arming themselves against black people. Uh, that's the reason for their behavior, and that's the behavior that they share uh, with the police. The police believe that they are the protectors of the better society from black folks, and they are very uh, explicit uh, in, in that. And that's why we see what we see every day, black bodies piling up on various pretexts. Uh, and in the case of Philando Castile, actually, um, there was some audio released uh, from the police radio uh, of the, the cop who shot Philando Castile. Um, and it was said that he was looking for a man with a, a wide-brimmed nose, uh, which is some pretty racialized language. Uh, you know, when we, when we speak about a wide-brimmed a wide nose, it's some pretty racialized language. Um, but can you talk a bit about like what uh, what the difference is here between you know specific cops exhibiting their overt racism, uh, so the role of that overt racism, um, but then also the role of uh, just sort of systemic uh, racism within the police system, even amongst cops who think of themselves as not being racist. That's right. It, it certainly is not about uh, racism and an, an ingrained uh, uh, white uh, supremacy, uh, or else these police departments uh, could, could not absorb large numbers of black police. It, it's about the mission, uh, and uh, if the mission is such that it can accommodate large numbers of black police who are willing to carry out uh, the mission, uh, just like uh, white, white police. Uh, and we know that this is a national uh, mission uh, because of the behavior of the cops all across the country is remarkably the same. The, the United States government has been deeply involved in the training of police as well as the weaponizing uh, and militarization of local police departments for more uh, than 40 years. So when people say, as they often do, as they always do, that this is a problem of training and that better uh, training uh, would somehow get rid of the uh, bad apples, the one or two percent, as they like to say, of the police force that behaves this way because uh, they're racist, well, they're just plain wrong. The mass murder <laughs> that police commit uh, against black people in the streets is the direct result of training that's been supervised, paid for, and directed by the federal government for the last 40 years. Uh, that's the problem. That's the mission. The mission is the problem. In your opinion, then, are there any police reforms that are worth supporting or are even looking into? Well, we hear over and over again about this amorphous thing called community uh, policing. Uh, and as we look into what police uh, community policing is, it, it appears to be whatever the police in any jurisdiction uh, say it is. Uh, the federal government, through its Justice Department, uh, is always talking about community policing. Uh, but when they uh, direct uh, their, their words uh, to police officers, what they emphasize is gaining the confidence of uh, enough people in the community so that there can be more intelligence provided to the police by the community. Uh, and this is meant and uh, accepted by the police uh, as a program uh, that increases uh, the number of snitches <laughs> in the black community, uh, that makes the police uh, job uh, easier because it has more informants in the community. Well, that's not about empowering the community, and it's certainly not about changing the mission of the police, which is the cause of all of these uh, bodies lying around. But then should we still be looking into community control of the police? It's worth looking into what the community wants the police to do. Uh, a, the, a community policing is not going to be an invention imposed upon the community by the police at the local, the state, or the federal level. If you see any kind of pol community policing scheme emanating from those sources, uh, they are schemes that are directed at uh, controlling, uh, containing, uh, terrorizing and criminalizing black folks, because that is, in, that is the, the mission of the police today. So we need to examine the mission of the police and certainly not accept any of their schemes for reforming themselves. They will just reproduce themselves in some kind of new packaging and clothing. Thanks so much for joining us, Glenn. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.